<laughs> so I prepared some questions from fans. It's about four sheets of paper. Oh God, oh God. <laughs> uh, what made you so radically change your attitude to social networks, internet and gadgets? You told many times that you are not into this, but today you're on Facebook adding friends and fans. Uh, <clears throat> basically, I didn't really change my mind. I still don't don't like it, and I still don't really understand it. It's just um, um, uh, a matter of fact that when you're not um, participating in this sort of social networks nowadays, you're just not existing anymore for a lot of people. And um, for the promotion of my band, it's just necessary to be existing. That's why I do it, but it's not, you know, on my Facebook profile, I'm not really posting any private shit, you know. It's just basically an information platform for things that are going on around my bands. <clears throat> Maybe you're chatting with uh, some friends, Money, Chris. No, when I want to talk with Money and Chris, I call them on the phone. <laughs> Is it possible to write to you on Facebook and to get an answer? Theoretically, if I know the person a little bit, uh, I might answer. But usually, I don't really answer that on, this, on, on all these requests because this is uh, just too much, you know. And like I said, I'm not really, be, I'm not really there pr for my private purposes, you know. It seems <clears throat> that uh, Marco much more about social networks. Marco is a different generation. He's he lives in this in this world, you know. I don't live in this world. <laughs> His job uh, to post on Instagram about ration, so. Uh, what, what means his job? He loves to do this, you know. He's just, he just feels good with this. You know, I'm not a guy that is really familiar with all this technique stuff. I rarely open my computer, you know. It, it can happen that I don't touch my computer for a week or so, you know. So <clears throat> I just have different things to do and I don't really care about being online and uh, doing all this stuff, you know. <clears throat> I don't check my emails, this is all not my world. In some way it's nice, relaxing without laptops uh, and internet. I mean, what it means nice is just, it's just the way it is, you know. I come from a generation where this was all not, um, this was not existing when I was young, you know. And um, I never really got used to live in this world because I have so many other things to do that take my interest and my my time um, <clears throat> that I never never really grew into this you know it's not that I'm that I want to be old-fashioned or that I I don't know that I want to be don't want to be don't want to be part of the world or so but this it's just not really touching me you know <laughs> and I don't really think it's necessary to be around all the time you know <laughs> I mean my the real, the real close people around me, they have my phone number, I have my mobile phone, and they can reach me whenever they want, you know. And but it's I better to be in reality. Yes. I don't, I don't need to be around for the whole world all the time, you know. <laughs> I don't think this is necessary. So I, and, it's, and I think it would be also more healthy for a lot of other people. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> to not be around all the time. So where actually have you been born? <coughs> what city? I have. I was born in Herne in Germany, the rural area, right in the middle. <laughs> and what the brightest impressions of childhood can you remember? Maybe games, friends, uh, school, and so on. No, I didn't like school. <laughs> school sucks. <coughs> I was not a good pupil. <clears throat> um, I don't know. Memories, so I have <laughs> Maybe uh, there were some problems at school. Of course, all the time. I was a bad pupil and I had always problems with my teachers. I don't like authorities, you know. <clears throat> so I could never really accept uh, the authority of teachers and you know, all this stuff. My parents are both teachers and I also didn't really like them. <laughs> I also had a lot of problems with my parents. I don't know. <clears throat> I'm happy since since I'm I'm an adult and I don't have to deal with this shit anymore. <laughs> Maybe you have some authorities uh, nowadays between other people, mm. some idols, and no. your personal heroes. Maybe 
I don't have idols or personal heroes. <laughs> I don't believe in this. Okay. You're fine uh, by yourself. Yes. How often you get together? Maybe some holidays? With my family? No, not that often. <laughs> because of uh, touring, maybe? No, because we live for, uh, apart from each other and I don't really... Not that much interested in seeing them. <clears throat> uh, did you ever play the role of Santa Claus? Because it's obvious that you could be the best metal Santa, or no. it is not accepted in Europe. No, I children don't would like you very much. I don't think so, because I don't like children. <laughs> <laughs> really. <laughs> uh, what was the worst thing you did in your childhood? Were you a naughty child? Yeah, pretty much. I nearly killed another kid one day. This was the most naughty thing. <clears throat> I mean, I didn't do it intentionally, but it was really close. <laughs> uh, he provocated you? Mm, yeah, he was uh, destroying one of my toy cars. And so I pushed him down the stairs and he nearly broke his neck. <laughs> so uh, actually, were you a bully or just uh, sometimes? No, no, no. <clears throat> Not aggressive, and I, um, I never really got in the got into the into the situation because I'm quite big, and no one really dared to touch me. <laughs> I was in a in a little street gang back then when I was a teenager, and there were some. Quite often there were fights with other gangs, but whenever uh, everybody was beating each other, I was just standing aside, and no one was trying to touch me. <laughs> Just so observing. I was, so I was waiting till everything was over. <laughs> <clears throat> Maybe you were waiting uh, for collecting bones and skulls? Yeah, yeah, probably. <laughs> no, it was really like, I, come on, who, who wants to touch me? Come on, you know, I'm, I'm ready to fight. But no one came, you know, like, oh, we're like, okay. <laughs> Everybody's doing this, I guess, when they're teenagers. <laughs> but actually, what's about education? Do you have some professional skills? Uh, instead of uh, music, maybe? Uh, I learned two jobs. <clears throat> First, I learned gardener, and then I learned taxidermy. Taxidermy. But I don't really work in this. Well, I'm, I'm still working as a, like, uh, for my hobby as a taxidermist. You know, all my, my skull uh, collecting stuff, and I'm mm -hmm. basically a bone preparing and, and casting stuff, you know. <clears throat> But this is just for my hobby. Actually, I've got uh, exactly that question. Do you still collecting bones? Maybe you digging some areas in Germany? I'm not digging. <laughs> I'm preparing dead animals. <laughs> ah, just preparing. Mm -hmm. I'm preparing the skeletons of animals. <clears throat> not, not an archaeologist. No, I'm not an archaeologist. This is concerned. maybe people confuse this kind of stuff, but this is complete different professions. Um, I'm, uh, I learned taxidermy and I specialized on bone preparation and I do this for my own, for my hobby, for my collector, for my collection of, of skulls and I also do this for, for other um, people or for, for museums or for, for zoos because uh, when animals are dying in zoos they also have their own education labs, you know, and so <coughs> they sometimes give me then That they had animals to prepare the bones for them and bring out the skeletons and stuff, you know. At the moment, I'm, I'm working on, on uh, um, hominid skull, uh, skulls, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm casting them. You know, hominids are uh, like Neanderthals and uh, like old, uh, old um, human species, you know, you know what I'm talking about? Neanderthals, Homo erectus, you know, this old kind of... Uh, um, anthropological species and I'm casting these skulls and uh, making copies of them basically to uh, for exhibitions <clears throat> sometimes of course I also work for zoos I have a an offer at the moment to cast uh, um, two two big tusks from elephants you know the tusks you know uh, the big teeth of elephants and they need copies of this for for the exhibition because the uh, original uh, um, 
ebony of the of the tusk is very um, very expensive, very uh, very valuable, and they are afraid that it's going to be stolen. So they want to keep the, take those out and put their just some copies in there, you know. <laughs> and you're a specialist in this field. I'm specialized in these kind of things, you know. Some visitors of museums and zoos can see your works, actually. Yes, they can. <laughs> But no one knows that it's from me, I guess. It's not Unnamed a, that's, works. That's, that's not a sign next to it. This was made by P.D. Wagner. So. <laughs> it would be great. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, it doesn't. It doesn't really show. Maybe you've you've seen stuff of mine already, but you don't know. <laughs> yeah. You can buy my my copies on in the internet also. Friend of mine is selling my stuff. Really? And what website displays your works? Um, on the old website, there was always a link to this site. <laughs> fossils. Uh -huh. Keeping fossils. Keeping fossils. Yeah, I remember. A friend of mine who, who always uh, was selling my, my copies. <clears throat> okay, just we search for keeping fossils from you. Yeah, you, you, you will find in the category uh, hominid casts, and all this stuff is done by me. <laughs> Actually, this interior, is it a private house or an apartment? And I live in a I live in a private house. Yeah. Private house. Uh, I guess you like more private houses than apartments. Uh, apartments, you mean like this kind of uh, flats that you can rent? Yes. No, it's too small for me. My my collection is way too big that I could live in this in a kind of flat. <laughs> I need a lot of space. <laughs> Maybe uh, your collection is everywhere in your house. No. <laughs> I see some horn. Oh, yeah, this is this is one one uh, uh, cow skull just hanging there on the. On this. It's not everywhere now. <laughs> I have most of my collection is natural skulls ah, and skeletons. The cards I'm doing I'm doing also for myself, but I basically sell them and do them for whatever purposes. Okay. <laughs> uh, do you have a pet? Maybe dog, cat, fish, snake, or maybe sound chaser? <laughs> no, I have a dog. Is it big dog or little? 30 kilos. 30 kilos. Quite big. Oh, it's not the biggest, but it's it's not a small one. <laughs> And what's his name? Uh, Xenia. Xenia? That's a Russian It's... name. Really? Yes. <laughs> Xenia, okay. Xusha, Oksana, the same. Yeah. It, uh... <laughs> I can't, can't remember how we came to this. He's already quite old. It's 12 now, meanwhile. Can't remember how we came to this nice. name. Xenia. <laughs> Girl's name. Yeah, it's a female dog. <clears throat> it's really old, meanwhile. <laughs> breed. Um, it's an Appenzeller. It's a Swiss uh, kind of breed. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a very old breed already. It was used like a, like a cattle dog back then, you know. <clears throat> I'm a big fan of seafood. <laughs> seafood. Uh, okay. Then seafood. you like sushi. Sushi, I like, of course. Everything with seafood. <laughs> And do you like to cook yourself at home? Mm, I'm not really good in cooking, but I sometimes do it, yeah. <laughs> sometimes you're cooking and sometimes you're hanging out and eating outside. Yeah, of course. I mean, when when we're traveling, of course, you always get food from somewhere. So you go into a restaurant and stuff. But when I'm home, basically, I'm cooking or my wife is cooking. <clears throat> but um, uh, or we we go out and take away some shit from somewhere. So you know. <laughs> so actually, I heard uh, a phrase: "My wife is cooking." That's enough uh, for uh, for all fans, I guess. <laughs> and everybody will be happy hearing this. Okay, and what's your favorite and best dish? Like I said, seafood is my favorite. Um, I like these little squids, you know. You know, this, uh, in Spain they are called chopitos. These are very, very tiny baby squids, you know. And they are, when you fry them, they are really very good. Really little ones, they are like, like maybe this big or so. And uh, you fry them 
and they are delicious. Marquitos Chopitos. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a fun name for Marcos. <laughs> okay. Uh, have you ever tasted Russian borscht or some yes, Russian of food? Of course. I mean, we've been in Russia very often. And when we are in Russia, of course, we eat Russian food. <laughs> and of course, I eat borscht. <laughs> I like it also. And what, you, what you've tasted in Russia except borscht? Uh, can, can, I can't really get the name. P something like you can pimiet. describe uh, ingredients, and they tell you. It's it's like a, a noodle thing with meat inside. Pilmeni. Hmm. Again. Pilmeni. Yeah, pilmeni. That's the word, right? <clears throat> this I like also. Uh, as I know, in Italy it's called ravioli. Yeah, quite the same. It's This is in, in Germany where they call it Maltaschen. <laughs> Maltaschen? Maltaschen, like like uh, mouth bag. <laughs> also, we have uh, Mante. That's uh, quite big pilmeni. Yeah. And oh, in, in Italy, they're called tortellini or so, you know. But this, this stuff I also like. <clears throat> so I uh, won't uh, ask you, have you tasted Russian vodka? Of course. It's quite, <laughs> <laughs> quite obvious. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, by the way, uh, where did you get the idea of your beard design? What people say? My beard? <laughs> I don't know. I have this since a long time already. Can't remember. I must have seen it somewhere. I don't know. I can't really remember. It's so, it's so long. That I have this. <laughs> okay. And, then, uh, and do you have such a uh, braid in your passport picture? Usually the, the passport pictures are not that big, you know, they always just go to here. <laughs> so you don't see it. It's cropped. <laughs> <laughs> so is it comfortable <coughs> while eating soup with this beard? Yeah, that's an issue, my friend. <laughs> Sometimes you can later you know, suck the soup out of your beard. <laughs> no, usually I, I'm, um, I hide the beard in my shirt, you know, like this. That's the conclusion. Like, then it's gone. <laughs> cool. <clears throat> I don't have such problem so far. What dish should a woman cook to astonish you? <laughs> Uh, it's a weird question to astonish me. <laughs> I don't know if if I would know it already, then it wouldn't be astonishing, you know. <laughs> okay, uh, which non-alcohol drink you like most? Non-alcohol. Just water. Water. I like water very much. Water <clears throat> is life. Mm -hmm. I'm not a fan of all these lemonades. All this sweet stuff, I don't really like that much. With gas? Yeah, just water, pure water with nothing. <laughs> Coca-Cola kills? I don't like this, all this stuff. I don't like all these lemonades and I don't like um, juices and stuff. From bonus materials, we know that in the early days, uh, you and the guys drank a lot. And these days, from two reports, uh, which I've translated for fan club, mm -hmm. uh, that you have some beer, right? Mm -hmm. uh, can you remember some problems at work because of alcohol? What's your conclusion? I mean, what work? I'm I'm a musician. I'm not working. <laughs> before uh, before you start a music career. <laughs> no, when I was working, I was never drinking, and I also never drink before the show. This is a um, this is a, a a rule for me because I I couldn't sing anymore. You know, when I drink before the show, I would forget all my lyrics. And uh, it would just be uh, be bad on stage. As for me, I really appreciate uh, that uh, in singers and yeah. musicians. So, I know a lot of singers or a lot of musicians that, that go wasted on stage. They, they, they go on stage and they're drunk already. Uh, I don't. I could not imagine the, I could play a show like this, you know. And mostly uh, those drunk musicians are not really good. They're not as good as they would be when they were sober. <clears throat> So that's a rule for me uh, that I never go on stage when I'm drunk. 
I never drink before the show, only after. <laughs> How much beers can you drink at one evening? Oh. <laughs> That's for little fans, little and slim fans. No, yeah, uh, I, th I probably can drink way too much. <laughs> um, actually, I'm not really proud of this, you know, because um, it's not really a, a, a sign of, of uh, quality for a person when you, when you can drink as much as possible. Um, actually, all this drinking, it, it doesn't really make you better. <laughs> But in early days, I can remember from myself and about some guys that That's I know that It's sign of authority. I know, especially when you're young, you're you're, you're like, wow! It's like uh, you you have a lot of respect for people that can swallow uh, like pigs, you know. But you know, when <laughs> then just imagine those people when they're like 60, 70, and they are like old alcoholics, you know, that are just like, I need my drink, you know. You know, it's it's nothing glorious about being drunk. <laughs> I have to say. So uh, I, I I agree, of course. In uh, the whole world, uh, it's a common set or a common matter that everybody is drinking. It's respected in all the societies that everybody is drinking all the time. So I guess that's a big problem because uh, no one really sees how dangerous this is. <laughs> uh, maybe uh, there is a tendency nowadays that. Uh, uh, Famous musicians don't drink, actually. The thing is, uh, I wouldn't really go that far to say don't drink at all or so, you know, because sometimes it's, it can be really funny to, to be drunk and when you're like really partying or so. But when, you, when, you live, when you're doing this for your whole life, you're kind of getting used to it, you know. You're always drinking just for boredom, you know, because you have nothing to do or so, you know. And... This is a bad thing about it, you know. If if you use alcohol alcohol um, in a in a way that you only that you only drink it when you really have a a real occasion for it, you know, then it's okay. I think it's okay. I, I would never really say don't drink at all or so, you know. <clears throat> But uh, just this everyday drinking, you know, this everyday drinking just for nothing, you know. This is. Mm, Not good. It's not healthy. It's not really bringing you anywhere. You know, it just wastes you over the time. You know. <laughs> okay. Okay. And I'm, I, I can tell you, I'm, I'm experienced. So <laughs> I know it's not good, and I'm really trying to, trying to, think more about what I'm doing. You know. And what's your favorite place in Germany? That's for German fans. Oh, my favorite city is actually Koblenz. <laughs> And do you like to walk the streets or uh, visit some places here? Yeah, I've, I'm, I visit Koblenz quite often. I have a lot of friends there. I know everything there, every corner. But in general, uh, there's a lot of nice places in Germany. I really have to say, a lot of. Uh, I like a lot of places in Berlin. I like Munich. is a very beautiful city, for example. There's a lot of good places. Germany is a nice country, I guess. Yeah, when you go to the to the border at the north, you know, you have the North Sea. It's a very nice islands there. So, <clears throat> but I guess everywhere in the world there's nice places. There's also a lot of nice places in Russia, for example. I'm pretty sure, and I know some nice places. So, <laughs> yeah, I was going uh, to ask about them. What about places abroad that you really like? Yeah, for like I said, in Russia, Irkutsk or so places at the Baikal Sea, you know, very nice area. Um, Have you seen actually uh, Lake Baikal? Uh, we've we've been there twice already, but it's never really that much time to really go out there. To I would like to go out in the wild for for example and really uh, do some some bigger touring there, you know, like. Um, really see the place you know but there's now of course when we are on tour it's not really time for these kind of things yes uh you need to uh write about one hour to wake up from uh, so it's always hard to to really see the surrounding <clears throat> mostly when you're touring russia you're riding in the train or flying 
and then you know how, the, how it looks when you're like 24 hours on the train coming from I don't know Siberia somewhere I, I really hate this long traveling sometimes there's train rides for more than 24 hours and this is really painful and also these long distance flights I hate it you know when you're like um, like uh, jailed in to a uh, to a plane for like 15 hours or so. This is just painful for me, you know. I'm, yes. uh, if we could afford to fly first class, but this is too expensive. We're not that rich, you know. Maybe first class, it's endurable, but when you're traveling at the economic class, it's just terrible, you know. <laughs> so I'm not really a big friend of, of traveling. <laughs> uh, have I wish you met some guys, uh, maybe some fans, in aeroplanes yeah yeah sure there's uh sometimes it's, it's funny when you, you know this uh the Cari the this this kind of uh sea cruise in the caribbean in always in january seventy thousand tons of metal you know have you heard about this festival uh, of course so we played there already three times and when you're uh, flying over you're flying over to miami and on this flight there's always metal fans because there's a lot of fans from germany also going over there you know this is, of course, funny. <clears throat> Always funny or maybe sometimes disturbing? No, no so far I was never disturbed. <laughs> I mean, mostly the people respect your, your privacy and you, you say hi, you talk a little bit and that's okay. If you will have to emigrate forever, where would you go? To immigrate? <laughs> I probably would like to live in Spain. <laughs> and why? Because it's warm there. <laughs> warm, sea, Spain. ocean. Something like Tenerife or so, you know, one of the Spain, Spanish islands. It's a lot, it's, uh, the, the climate is just more, way more healthy for me, you know. I don't really um, feel so good in this cold and wet climate we have here sometimes. We've just made some vacation there in Tenerife, uh, beginning of this year everybody with the whole band and um and it, it was this was really something completely different you know in in january in germany it's very cold and wet and uh freezing and you go there it's like 25 degrees to 28 degrees or so and you can go swimming every day in january <laughs> actually in so. january uh, here in saint petersburg uh we have such weather wet and cold yeah, pretty much the same, like I guess, like us. So, we invite you in January to Russia on vacation. No, oh, that's too cold for me. I, I prefer to go to Tenerife. <laughs> so, what's your favorite books do you read at the moment? Mm, what have I read in the last time? Um, mostly, I, I read like... Um, um, scientific stuff, you know, about anything about bones and and archaeology and and I don't know fossils, all the kind of shit. Um, what I I read recently, some criminal story also when I was flying in the plane, but I can't even remember the title. It's just like you you read it and forget it at the same time again. <laughs> some something from Sweden, I think. <laughs> I can't even remember this uh, the author name, you know. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> I have I have a lot of uh, um, stuff from Pat Patricia Cornwell, or so I, I read a lot of stuff. You know, this is more uh, criminal stories of uh, for forensic uh, anthropologist, you know. <clears throat> okay. But this is just junk food in the end, you know. <laughs> Uh, it's uh, not really literature. <laughs> did you read some Russian uh, writers, whatever? Mm, not really, no. <laughs> Dostoevsky, Pushkin. No, I never read this kind of stuff. Russian great poet Pushkin. I know them. I know him. Yeah, I know about those guys, but I never really read this stuff. I yeah, know they're, they're highly recommended, but you know, <laughs> I'm not a philosophist. <laughs> Can you give some advice to fans which books are must read? For me, uh, a kind of uh, aha effect, you know, something like uh, 
And I thought, oh, this is very interesting. Was was, uh, but it's long ago already. It's more than twenty years ago since I read all this Lovecraft stuff. You know, this this was inspiring very much for me. What books to read uh, to become smarter? <laughs> oh, this is a um, this is a, a topic that, that everybody has to find out himself. You know. What kind of stuff to read? This is a very, I think, stuff that really brings you forward, that makes you smarter. This is uh, very individual, you know. So, and one fan wants to know: Did you read Edgar Allan Poe uh, poem Eureka? I must have read it, yeah, long ago. But I, you know, this is uh, twenty, twenty-five, thirty years ago since I read all this stuff. That I read Poe and also Lovecraft, which was a Follow up of Poe, and it's so long ago I can't remember the stuff in, all in detail anymore. You know, I still have the books somewhere. Like maybe I can like when I have when I find the time I can just have a look at it and and re remember it or so. But <clears throat> right at the moment I'm out of the picture. <laughs> okay. Uh, so do you like uh, some movies? Maybe horror movies. Uh... And what movie is your favorite? You know, I'm, uh, it might be disappointing for you, but I'm really not a not a movie fan. <laughs> I'm not disappointed. I I rarely go to the cinema. I rarely watch movies. I always miss most of the stuff, you know. And I have also not really a clue about it. <laughs> so if you don't really like movies, you know what? Mostly when I when I'm studying. To, to watch a movie, I'm falling asleep after half an hour. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> why. The same. <clears throat> so if you don't like movies, uh, what activity do you like most when you have free time? I'm always preparing and I'm always doing stuff with bones. It's, it's take, consuming 90% of my time when I'm not working as, uh, with, with music. Basically, my life is quite boring for for people outside. I'm, there's only very few things I'm doing. I'm I'm sitting with my guitar and composing songs, or working with my band, or I'm preparing bones or doing stuff like this. Okay, bones is your it's, main it's, passion in life. And I have so much things to do that I really uh, I don't know how to find the time to do all the all the um, all the offers that I have. You know. There's so many requests for for casts at the moment. I really don't know when to do this, and I have to write a new album. Um, I have to um, prepare for 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 the festival season. I have to promote the new Rage album. There's so much stuff I have to do at the same time <laughs> that I don't really have time anymore to read books or watch movies or so when I'm when I'm done you know uh, <clears throat> with my daily work it's mostly already 10 in the evening and then, then I'm just too tired to do anything I'm just <clears throat> I just crash on the sofa and fall asleep <laughs> most, mostly of the time by yeah. the way uh, in some interview I heard that you have many many musical ideas for new songs uh, that collected many many years And for now, it's impossible to look through all of them. Yes, of course. I have shitloads of of tapes still here. I'm at the moment. I'm I'm working with both Marcos and also Money to um, go through all this stuff. We digitalize all these tapes. You want to see the shit here? <laughs> Look at this! All these cassette tapes. Thank you. <laughs> it's all. It's not all. This is just a very sh a few of them. You know, I have like. Wardrobes, shitloads of those, thousands of tapes with ideas and and old recordings and stuff. You know, we are we are working constantly on new material, because we want to do sooner or later we want to do an album with Refuge also. <coughs> so we're just collecting uh, songs at the moment. It's really awesome. So the, uh, we're, we're we're both putting together ideas that we both have. So it's gonna be a co-work everything. And what about a work with Marcus? It's just exactly the same. We were also throwing together all the ideas. 50-50. Yeah, 50-50. Depends. Uh, um, 
most of the of the of the main song ideas coming from me. It's, uh, I'm I'm coming with a with a basic structure of a song, and then Marcos is adding like uh, guitar stuff to it. You know, he's filming making... on mobile phone the first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The mobile phone shit. You know, I've, have you seen this once? I I don't have them on my computer, but it looks funny. I'm just sitting with my uh, classical guitar and and. Uh, <clears throat> Playing some playing the chords and singing them and the stuff to it, you know. And then we we sit together basically with this with this basic structure of the song, with the basic skeleton of the song, and uh, put skin on it, you know. <laughs> and that's when when Marcos and Money come to the picture, you know. And they are putting like some flesh to the bones. <clears throat> it's like taxidermy in music. Right, just the other way around, you know. They're not taking away the flesh; they are putting the flesh on it, <laughs> on the skeleton. And um, so that's why uh, I decided that in the end um, I'm, I'm going to give credit to both of them for the songs we do for Rage with Marcos. He's going to get the co-credit, and for the songs we're going to we do for Refuge Money, we'll get the co-credit. That's just fair, I think, because they are just that much involved in the work, you know, and uh, also contributing their ideas to the, to my stuff. So I think it's just fair that they get their their credit. The result uh, is going to be great, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's a bit a bit of a difference to how I worked with Viktor Smolsky. With Viktor, it was like I came with fifty percent of the songs, and he came with the other fifty percent of the songs. So when the songs that he wrote were really hundred percent from him, and my songs were also pretty much um, most of the stuff from me. And uh, in the end, he demanded also a co-credit because he was like arranging my stuff, you know. Um, so it's it's a bit different now because now um, more I, I have more the how to say this uh, now the control of of the output is more at me you know <clears throat> so basically it's my songs with some skin on it from the Actually, guitar. some part of fans uh, like it like it was in the old days back in the nineties or so you know with when I worked with money the first time. Uh, or when I worked later with Spiros and Sven, it was pretty much the same like I work now, you know. And there, uh, there, uh, that's how it should be exactly. That's that's when Rage became famous, and that's what when the classic material came up. It was uh, the way to work uh, back then, and I think it's uh, it's the right formula for Rage. It's uh, and when you have you heard already the new album of Rage? No, no, I haven't heard. When you hear it, you will understand what I mean. Uh, the old, the old energy is back now. Uh, I'm doing, I'm doing sports regularly, like two or three times a week. I'm going to a, to a gym, and working out there, and I do bike driving. I have a, um, a, a mountain bike, and I'm mountain mostly, uh, mostly. Uh, Riding on on a side of the road, you know. <laughs> we we have uh, a, a nice forest next to the house where we live, and uh, this is mostly where I ride. Actually, Germany is a football country. Maybe you are a football fan. No, I, that's what I what I wanted to say. I'm not really into just watching sports and stuff, you know. And I'm not a football fan. <laughs> uh, you're not really fan craziness, and you're not really religions. Of course, I don't, I don't like religion. Religion is a very bad um, tool for the for the mighty for them for those who who rule the world to submit the people and keep people stupid. <laughs> and uh, also, I'm not a fan of of, uh, of any sports stuff or whatever. You know, this is just not interesting for me. Maybe. When we have a world championship or so, I'm I'm watching the, the the some of the games, you know, but I'm not really a fan or so. I wouldn't say this is not an ideological decision or so. I just I'm bored from this. Yes, so me too. Boring. For me, it's boring to watch people run behind run behind the ball. You know, I I used to play soccer when I was a kid. You know, I played football with my with my friends. <laughs> I like this. This was nice. But to watch other people play football is boring for me. <laughs> Have you ever ridden a horse? 
If yes, how was that? I was I did ride a horse a couple of times, but um, nowadays I don't do it because I'm too heavy for the horses. Um, you shouldn't be more heavy than like 70, 80 kilo or so for the horse. You feel sorry for horse. Mm, it's just, uh, my, you know, my wife would kill me if I would jump on, on off one of our horses. We have like 10 horses at home. If I would jump on one of the horses, I would, she would kill me probably. <laughs> you have 10 horses? Yeah. Right, we, we, right we, there. We have a little farm, kind of farm, and uh, we have four, four horses our own, and the other are from people who rent the stable. I feed them and help to clean the stables and stuff, <clears throat> so I know about horses. Okay, still about hobbies. Uh, do you like uh, to hang out with your friends in forest uh, near lake or visit some pub? I would prefer the, the lake, <laughs> make a fireside and, and grill some stuff and uh, drink some beers at the, at the lakeside. Sausages, beers. I would prefer this compared to the pub. Barbecue. <laughs> mm, right. <clears throat> and going there on bikes, maybe. It'd be fine, yeah. <laughs> okay. Would you sing something sitting near the fire together with friends and acoustic guitar? Of course. <laughs> as soon as we have guitars, we're going to start singing and play. <laughs> German songs? No, not, not German songs, really. I mean, what, what German songs are interesting? I don't know. Mostly, I guess we would, we would play some folk stuff and, and, or some rock stuff in acoustic versions. <laughs> As folk stuff, uh, German folk stuff or yeah. world stuff? Um, I don't know any any interesting German songs, you know. <laughs> Mostly the the German folk music is pretty boring. It's only the the always the same three chords. Uh, it's not my, not my pair of shoes. And never devil note. <laughs> I would then prefer to play real folk songs like stuff from Simon Garfunkel and stuff like this, you know. And pr probably I would play a lot of self-composed shit. <laughs> That's what I'm doing, basically. Just le leftovers uh, or unreleased stuff. Yeah, when you know, mostly when when this kind of situations happen, I'm together with with someone that it's also in my band or so. You know, um, we had a situation like this recently on one of the air on on one airport. I can't remember where. We were we had an acoustic guitar with us in our hand luggage, and we had uh, uh, plenty of time to kill, and so we were jamming. We were basically we were playing Beatles songs. We were jamming on ideas ourselves <laughs> from ourselves. So <laughs> it was nice, and a lot, of, time. a lot of people at the airport were joining us, and it was interesting. <laughs> PV, uh, do you have a driver license? And car. And what car is it? I have a driving license, of course. And I'm driving a Mitsubishi Lancer. You like Japan? <laughs> it's chill. <laughs> this is this is, has not an ideology, ideology, ideology uh, background, so it's just a, I don't know. <laughs> a couple of days ago, I saw uh, some video about Japan, and there, Japan people. They prefer Mercedes Benz. <laughs> Isn't it surprising? Yeah, but Mercedes Benz is, is very exp expensive. For me, I don't really um, see a car like a status symbol. A car is for me a machine that I just use for coming from here to there. You know, I want to drive comfortably. You know, um, <clears throat> and I I want to have a, an engine that's powerful enough that I don't fall asleep while I'm driving. <laughs> But I don't really care what kind of car this is, or is this a, is, is this a kind of big name or so. I don't really care, you know. You know, there is a nice phrase in Russia. Uh, car is not a luxury, but a means of transport. For me, it is a mean, mean of transport, yeah. <clears throat> I know that for, for a lot of people, it's more than like this. A lot of people like um, see, see it as a status symbol or so, you know. We, Some people say it's like a prolonging of their cock, you know. <laughs> so, uh, 
What gear do you use at home to listen to music in quality? I have a very old uh, stereo at home from, I think it's still, it's still from the 80s or with, so. With tapes? No, no, the, ta the, the tapes are usually, the, they're, they're breaking after a while, you know. Mostly I listen to, CDs, to CDs, um, but it's quite old fashioned. Maybe you collect vinyl? I still have a lot of a, a huge vinyl collection. I have a, I have tons of vinyls and CDs here. You know, most of the stuff I collected when I was young, uh, when I was um, like a, a kid or so. I started when I was like seven or so. Started to uh, collect um, vinyl singles. You know, this, this, the, the 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 small ones. You know, uh, they were called singles back then. You know, and I have a huge collection from the sixties. You know. Or maybe silence is better than listening to music at home. To be honest, uh, the the moments of uh, uh, when I when I want to have silence or so that I'm going out for a walk or so, you know. But when I'm at home, I'm mostly working on on, on bones and stuff, and then I always listen to CDs. <laughs> okay. I like it to, uh, to to listen to music while I'm working. <laughs> By the way, uh, you start using in-ear monitors. That's right. Uh, uh, the in-ear monitors are, are way more quiet than if I would like uh, still w use the monitoring on stage. You know, um, it blocks yeah. some sounds uh, from it audience. The way and and you can make your a real nice stere uh, stereo mix on your head uh, quite silently. You know, um, this is better for the ears you know i was ruining my ears over the years and uh, the the reason why i use in ear monitoring now is to save my ears basically otherwise i would be deaf now it's time to take <laughs> care of ears yes i i i was really in the danger of becoming deaf and um so this was the only solution to to keep on working uh, as a musician for me i would i would be fucked up meanwhile <laughs> right this is just a, a, a health thing, you know. I want to, I want to keep my ears. <laughs> nice. That's why. I, it's I, I know the real life sound without in ears is is, is more, 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 more vibe, more, more, more vivid, you know. But <clears throat> I would just ruin my ears if I would continue like this. It was so loud on stage. It was ridiculous. I, I mean, when you're doing this professionally, like I do. Uh, it, it was already very dangerous that I w was not using it for 30 years, you know, because um, still my ears are, my hearing is not so good anymore, you know. But if I would continue still now, I would be already probably deaf, I guess. Because with the older you get, uh, the more um, sensitive your ears become to this. In the, in, I remember the, the last tour that I did without in ear monitoring. Um, I was, you, you could talk to me, I wouldn't hear you anymore, you know. After like two or three weeks, I was completely gone, you know. Terrible. It, it took me from a couple of months to get back to, no, to a normal hearing, you know. I was constantly on this beep on your head, you know. It was so loud on stage that my, my ears were already tickling while we were playing, you know. It was tickling in the ears and it was like painful in the end, you know. After half of the show, uh, you, it feels l quite numb, you know, like like you like you took some drugs or so. You know, it's like, like I was getting dizzy, you know. And so I, um, when I was home after this tour, I just decided this can't go on like this, you know. I won't survive this anymore. So you didn't <laughs> so, use in-ear monitors in Moscow uh, a couple of years ago. No, if I'm not mistaken. Just only uh, I, I use in-ear monitoring since last year. I started last year using in monitor. I never did it before. <clears throat> when last time you visited some concerts, not as a musician, but as a listener? Oh, <laughs> good question. Last, the last concert I've seen as a fan was Sisters of Mercy. <laughs> Sisters of Mercy, nice. Judging by many videos, uh, you often kidding, smiling and generally positive generator. Are you such person in life or not really? I'm laughing a lot, yeah. <laughs> Mostly, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, consider myself to be a philosopher. I'm, 
just an ordinary normal guy and I like to have fun I like to be positive <laughs> okay do you uh, like some comedy shows or oh, depends you know in the, in the last years uh, it uh, so many comedy shows were coming up that it's already boring you know <laughs> Yes, really. Of course, I I like real good comedians. I really I like, of course. And can you tell a joke for fans? A joke? No, I don't. This is always. I never can can tell a joke spontaneously. I always have to think about it, and then it's already gone. Especially when you want to tell it in English. It's not your, your not your native language. Uh, your, your native language. I can I can try, you know. Uh, But I'm not sure if I if I can tell it in English so easily, you know. It's uh like Superman is flying on on the sky on the sky, you know, he's flying around and he's flying over a cornfield and he sees Superwoman down there. <laughs> she's like spreading her legs and like <clears throat> and he says, Whoa, she's open for me, you know. He flies down and fucks her hard and uh takes off again. <laughs> so it's gone. And then uh Superwoman asks, "What was this?" I said, "I don't, I don't know what it was, but my ass hurts like hell." Says the Invisible Man. <laughs> yes, actually, uh, I was listening to you and realized that that's a Russian joke. That that's I, a Russian joke that I know for about ten years or more. Really? <laughs> actually, in the Russian language, but the same. Okay. So you see, most of the jokes are already around since a long time, <laughs> and I don't know. Sooner or later, they get to you, and then you think it's a new one. But widely, most of widely spread jokes. <laughs> yeah. Do you it's know some language uh, except of English? Not really. I was the only language that I ever tried was to learn Greece, and I, I, um, I was, um, like. Uh, having lessons like half a year or so and I learned I learned some of the very elementary stuff but I already forget everything again you know one of my sisters she uh, has studied Russian she can speak fluently Russian <coughs> maybe uh, she goes to Russia very often not anymore she she um, she used to uh, live in Russia for a while she lived in Siberia nice background Oh, yeah, yeah, that's the cover of the new album. <laughs> yeah, I see. Uh, strange question. Do you believe in vampires or demons? And no. actually, are you a superstitious person? No, not at all. <laughs> Absolutely not. The only vampires I believe is a vampire bat, and I like to prepare it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I have some, some skulls of vampire bats. So, uh, do you have some talismans for luck, then? No, the only thing I have some um, some uh, what's the word? Not jewelry. Some some shit that you can hang around your neck that that I just like because it looks good. You know, you see this here. Yes, that skull. Yeah, it's a little silver skull. This kind of stuff. I just like it because it looks good. Or, or have you seen this? This is a from a a, a little lion skull. It's it's yes, really like, like like original. You can also uh, um, open the jaw. It works. <laughs> Or this year, uh, this uh, that's a raven skull. This kind of stuff, you know. Awesome. <laughs> But it's not like a talisman or so. I just like them because they are nice skulls, and they're like like they're like nice replicas of skulls. You know, actually, they were. Um, these are. Um, How how do, how do you call this? Um, this um, the people who made those. They they scan them in and minima minimize them to this size, and then they they cast them. Really, you know, they re this, these are basically like casts from real skulls, just minimized. You know, great. It's a it's an American. Uh, uh, There's two guys from America, from I think in California they live. They're doing this. Um, And sell the stuff over internet, you know. They have lots of different animal skulls. Don't you know that uh, skull 
actually a human skull uh, in different cultures that's symbol of being wise person yeah i mean this the, the spe especially the human skull is is a symbol for lots of things everywhere in the world it's uh, it's a uh, the the um, thing of of cults everywhere you know uh, this is also interesting uh, I, i also care about this a little bit in my collection you know when, when I'm, i'm collecting for example i have uh, you know this this sugar skulls from mexico they have the yeah, they have once in a year they have the day of the dead there and then everybody is like buying this this skulls made from sugar you know <laughs> this is a cultural thing there it, it's a part of the mexican culture And all this kind of stuff, you know, I've, I also find interesting. And do you see many dreams when sleeping? Sometimes I dream, yeah. Can you speak about your nightmares? The problem is that mostly I forget everything when I when I after I woke up. That's a problem for most of the people. When you dream something, it's gone right after you woke up. You can't really remember anymore. When I twenty um, years ago, I made it a, like a habit to me that I would write down what I dreamt. But I haven't done this for for a long time, and I have to admit that I very rarely have nightmares <laughs> in the last time in the last years. Like you are, maybe some dreams became inspiration for lyrics on and yes, songs. they did already. That's that's even some uh, one song on the new album that is inspired by nightmares that I had. But. Um, This is already a while ago. <laughs> And what's the title of this song? Spirits of the Night. <clears throat> okay. Really, in, in this, in really the very minute when I woke up, I spoke about this dream. And mm -hmm. that's why I remember it. Yeah, you have to, in the moment that you wake up, you have to write it down or tell it to someone. Otherwise, it will be gone. <laughs> this, this is... Uh, 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 just for example, because it's just standing here on the table. These are the kind of casts that I do, you know. This is uh, Homo heidelbergensis. It's an, it's like a, a 400,000 year old skull was found in France, and this is this kind of uh, uh, castings I do from skulls, you know. 400,000. Oh, the original one, of course. This is a copy that I made, but it looks pretty much like like the original. <clears throat> Great. And what it's made of? <laughs> it's made of uh, um, epoxy resin. Do you know what this is? I I guess it's, I know. It's a, it's a kind of uh, plastic, a kind of uh, artificial stuff. You know, I make I'm making the 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 cast of silicone. You know, and I then saw this, I saw this in the video. You know the technique, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> And that's a really interesting part of your life yes. be behind music. Of course, and it's very, it takes a lot of time in my life and, and it, it takes a lot of um, space in my head. <laughs> so. If you uh, wasn't really into music, uh, you may just do this thing with skulls, with, with bones. Oh, of course. It's, and it would be enough. If I would have, wouldn't become a musician, I will just do this. <laughs> How would you comfort a sad man if you meet such? How would I comfort what? A sad man. Oh. If you meet such. This uh, would depend on what is the, the reason for, for being sad, you know? What is the reason? I imagine uh, that it's... I would, try to, I would try to listen to him and, and make him tell his problem, you know? And I, I would try to find a solution, maybe, or would just tell him, "Okay, you're not alone on this on this world with this problem." You know. Are you a helpful person? Mm, depends. Okay. <laughs> If I see someone really in pain and I and I have the opportunity to talk with him, of course I would ask him, "What's up with you?" You know, can I help you? Of course. <clears throat> PV, how to live your life right? <laughs> um, so I, I would, I'm trying to answer this very generalistic, you know. Uh, to live your life right, it uh, you are, a person lives his life um, mostly right when he's when you try to to do what you are born for, you know, to do exactly what is your 
um, what is what is your personal meaning? Why are you here? You know, but for, of course, first of all, you have to find out what is what is really the reason why you're here. What is what is it that you can give to the world? You know. So I'm really lucky that I've I've I found my my meaning. I found my uh, the things for me that make me special. That make me uh, that 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 I can really give out to the world. You know. And that's what I'm doing. So I think for me, for my, for myself, I'm living like let's say 80% right. You know, there's still some things left uh, that I didn't fulfill so far. Uh, <clears throat> but this is more on, on on different levels. You know. But you're trying. I'm t yeah, of course I'm trying. <laughs> but uh, you know, you uh, <clears throat> we're only human. You know, we're weak. And we make mistakes all the time, you know. But uh, the older I get, the more I learn about my mistakes, and I'm trying to just, uh, yeah, sort them out. <laughs> so, what would you like to learn in broad sense? Hmm. I don't know. I'm not really missing anything that I to learn, you know. I'm I'm doing pretty much exactly what I want to do and what I what I can do best. Um, and my problem at the moment, what, what I would really like to learn, for example, would be um, to live healthier. <laughs> this is, uh, it, it, it sounds pretty cheesy, you know, maybe it sounds a bit stupid, you know, but I would really like to learn how to live healthier. So actually, uh, that's what I wanted to hear. I, I know how to live healthy, but I don't, I just cannot do it all the time, you know. I, I, when I Whenever I try, I maybe... I succeed for a day or so, but then the next day, uh, again, I eat shit and I drink too much alcohol and whatever, do sh do shit, you know. Don't uh, I don't do the things that I would that I know that would be good for me, you know. And this is a part of human being. Exactly. And what's the conclusion actually? That the flesh is weak. <laughs> the conclusion, I don't know. There, there's probably no conclusion for this. Um, <sighs> Maybe I need more discipline or so, but, but I don't know. I really don't know. <laughs> it's uh, I'm not the only one, and, and maybe probably the majority of the, of the human population on Earth is making these kind of mistakes. You know, <laughs> it's really hard to, to to live 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 like you should live. You know, <laughs> the inspiration for these songs. Yes. Forever dead was uh, the big problems and issues I had with my father. He was a very violent father. He was uh, beating me all the time when I was a kid and trying to put me down. And um, it uh, took me decades to uh, to really um, work this out, you know, to understand what happened and to uh, find a way to live with it, you know. Most people they just push all this away and they don't don't want to think about it anymore. I know that a lot of people have, have the same experiences as kids, you know, with yes. having yes. violent fathers, mostly fathers, that uh, mistreat the kids. You know, <clears throat> especially in my generation, it was kind of normal. You know, kids were beaten at this time. You know, it was a normal way to to uh, to raise kids to beat them. You know, <laughs> and. Of, um, no, no one really understood what, what what this really made to the to the people, you know. However, I I tried to uh, work this out and and uh, live with it, with this fact, you know. Because it imprints for for a whole life, actually, from childhood. Of course, and in this song, I I, I talk about this and I try to kind of. Um, um, that's working out through lyrics and songs. You know, uh, of a word therapy, you know, this song. <laughs> and what other songs it was, you ask? Uh, down. Lyrics uh, to Down. Ah, uh, this is very private. <laughs> now I'm dancing on your grave. Mm, yeah, this was uh, basically the inspiration was uh, the way the, um, I had a problem with, with one guy uh, when this lineup in 99 uh, the lineup with Spheras and Sven Fischer when this broke up you know when they just left me 
and um, I had a problem with one guy, <clears throat> and uh, so this was basically, basically like, fuck you, you know, <laughs> the song, you know, it's uh, dealing about this a little bit. And the other one was Death is the on its Way. One, death is on its Way, Falling from Grace, part two. Yeah, the inspiration was the death of my stepmother. She died of uh, blood cancer in, oh, long ago, 90, 96 or so. Actually, these lyrics of Death is on its Way are very old. I wrote them back then in, two, in, 19, in 96, but the song was released on Soundchaser, right? Yes. Years later. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> so it was great pleasure for me to have such uh, informal conversation with you. Thank you okay. so much. Thank you very much from all fan club. And we're really waiting for rage or refuge in Russia, especially in St. Petersburg. Yeah, we are, at the moment we're booking with, with a live booking uh, with the company. We are booking um, a tour for, for the new album in autumn this year. And there is uh, supposed to have, uh, I think, four shows in Russia we're going to do. And also one in St. Petersburg. Not really uh, many shows, just four. I think four shows is enough. Well, thank you so much. See you. Goodbye. Goodbye.